<laughs> All right. All right. So let's get going. So I am here, Lisa Hanley with Remax Advantage Plus here today with one of my preferred lenders who we just closed on a fabulous loan for a first time home buyer. And um, I wanted to introduce everybody to them and to some of their first time home buyer programs that they have. So Kelvin, you want to start and introduce yourself? Sure. Kelvin came in with, uh, I was going to say Amic Home Loans, but we got uh, sold this past year. We're over at Loan Depot, which is the uh, number one retailer in the country. And uh, we help a lot of first time home buyers and we'll get into the programs a little bit. Uh, the best part of my business is my loan partner, Lindsay, who kind of makes sure we look good on everything we do. So Lindsay Stevens. Lindsay, you want to introduce yourself and kind of talk a little bit about yourself, how long you've been with Kelvin? Sure. Um, well, I've been, I was with Amic for about a year before I really signed on to start working with Kelvin. And now we've been working together for a little bit over a year. Yep. Nice. And I can <laughs> say Lindsay is amazing. Um, so a lot of the things, um, when you are working with Kelvin and I, you will be working with Lindsay and, um, doing a lot of talking with her. Um, she is fabulous and incredibly helpful. So we wanted to bring Lindsay on here as well. So, um, let's be honest, Lindsay makes Kelvin look good. Yeah, she does. <laughs> That's good. And just as background, I've been in the, uh, in January, Lisa, it will be 20 years since I've uh, started in the mortgage origination business. So. There's not a lot we haven't seen between uh, Lindsay and I. So. Nice, nice. I'm sure that 20 years has gone just like that. Yes, so fast. And awesome. I still look so good for being in this for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the program that we just closed on um, with my first time home buyer, who we were super excited to get in, um, had a great closing, went incredibly smooth. And I know she was able to get a um, first time home buyer program and I want to let you kind of talk a little bit more about what um, is out there for options for first time home buyers. You know, there's a lot of, there's a myth that you have to come in with 20% down. That's so not true. And we want to break that myth. So let's help those first time home buyers in programs that you maybe have and um, in down payments that they may need to come up with and how much money they need to come down um, to be able to purchase their first house. Cool. So I'm going to have Lindsay start just by telling the story about this bar we just closed on. And then I'll go into some of the, the details that get everybody excited. Just oh. kidding, but I'll go through some of that after Lindsay tells the story. All right. Well, for this particular borrower, she wanted to do as little as down or as little down as possible. So we looked at our bond loan. We have um, a really awesome program with Minnesota Housing. And it requires you to put as little as just $1,000 down. There's a lot of requirements that go into it, but she fit it perfectly. And um, she actually, she had put earnest money down and got to walk away from the closing with a little extra cash to use, you know, for some fun spending money on her new home. So it was a smooth process, but we just have to make sure that the borrowers, you know, fall in the guidelines with that program. And if they don't for that particular, we have a ton of other first time home buyer programs that we usually can find somebody like the right fit for. That's what Calvin's great at. He always yeah. knows right where to place them. Yeah. So one of the things that was cool on this um, transaction is she put $2,000 of earnest money down and got money back at closing. Because on both of these programs, Lisa, we only need $1,000 into the transaction. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. And on this program, it's the Minnesota Housing Bond uh, Program. A lot of people refer to it as a Mahafa loan. And there's like a lot of variations and I won't go through all the details because you asked me not to because I thought it would be boring. So I'm trying to not to do that. Um, but there's basically two types of programs. One is going to have a... Uh-oh. Uh, hello. All right. You you finished that. One is, one is going to have... So if you want to start from there. I'm just trying to get myself back up here. <laughs> no worries. We... We can hear you now, but we just can't see you. Welcome to a live video. This is what happened. Uh, what <laughs> so while Kevin's gone, I'm just going to kind of expand on something um, while he's trying to get set up. When it comes to like the, the, the earnest money, so they were talking about the down payment, which is the earnest money. Um, right. We want to make the offer look strong. So we put down a, a $2,000 earnest money um, so that it looked like she was a strong buyer because right now you really should be putting at least 1% down. And if she would have only put a thousand dollars down, it would have looked like a weaker offer than coming in with $2,000, even though she was getting that money back. So we want to put in 
my job as the real estate agent is to put in the strongest offer possible, knowing mm-hmm. that she was going to get that money back because she only had to come in with a thousand dollars down. So, yeah. so, and, and if you're a renter right now, realize you have to pay first and last month's rent plus a pet deposit a lot of times or, mm-hmm. or separate deposits, you're already in for that thousand dollars. So if you're renting or you're thinking about renting or thinking about buying, you can get into a house with a lot of times less money than you can get into a house or to a rental. So keep that in mind. Calvin's back, so you can go ahead and continue. About that. So we were talking about the two different programs. The first program, you actually have kind of a monthly payment with that. Uh, they basically give you the money so you can get into this deal with only $1,000 down, but then it's part of your monthly mortgage payment. The reason you'd have that is if you made too much money for the other program, which is a deferred payment program, which says, hey, you don't have a payment, but when you sell the property, we're going to get our money back. So you got to kind of keep that in mind when you're selling the property. If you borrow $10,000, even though you haven't made a payment on it, they're going to take the first 10 grand off the top, pay back to state for that those dollars. The income limits are really good. If you have that monthly payment, uh, you, I think the income limit's $154,000. Wow. So that's crazy high. That right? is crazy high. If you're not going to have a, that monthly payment, then for a two-person household, let's say it's a newer couple, it's $74,000. If you have one child, so a household of three, and they count everybody in the household, it's $84,000. Household of four, it's ninety-three, and a household of five, it's $101,000. So it's a great, it's a great way though to get in if you're, but you got to, like Lindsay says, and she's great at making sure we fit all the boxes, but man, we just got to make sure that we fit in the box um, because a lot of times we get caught on things like, oh, we didn't think that for that or this, and then we got to add this income or that income. Now we're over the income limit or the debt to income ratio didn't work, you know? So we, there's a lot of boxes and I know we don't want to get into it, but just know that if you're renting, you can buy a home, get into it with with literally a thousand bucks and pay less than rent. And that's what we're seeing over and over again. We're just like really trying to encourage people to stop paying rent, get into your first home. We can do it with hardly any money out of pocket. And the the last program, so that's kind of that bond program. The other program I'm just gonna to touch on one second is just home ready or home possible, which is a 3% down payment. So think about a $200,000 home, $200,000 home, 3% down, we need six grand in. If you can get a gift for that money, that's the, a much better option even than that bond program because the interest rate on the bond program that we didn't talk about is at three and a quarter percent. And we say, hey, three and a quarter, holy cow, that's great. But the reality is I can lock in a 30 year, 30 year fixed rate at 2.75, 2.625. Right now we're right in that range. So we pick up a half point interest rate. If you just have a, a mom, dad, aunt, uncle, brother, sister, somebody who can borrow you or gift you, sorry, gift you that money. Almost said it wrong. Lindsay would be mad at me. <laughs> gift you that money for the down payment. And then uh, Freddie Mac just came out with a program where they'll actually give you money for the closing costs up to like two or three thousand dollars. So we have a we have a lot of programs and at the end of the day it's all about getting out of paying rent and finding that first new home. Yeah, getting out of paying rent and and building your own wealth because when you are renting, you're building somebody else's wealth. So it's time to start building your own wealth. And the best way to build your own wealth is to get into a property of your own. And so mm-hmm. keep in mind with these programs that he's talking about, there are different options. You know, one with only a thousand dollars down. Yes, your interest rate might be a little bit higher at 3.25, but my goodness. I mean, I right. think I bought my home at, I think I bought my first home at 8%. Um, I, I know other people will have been up at around 12%. So even if at, you know, 3.25, it's still historic low interest rate, you know, but like they said, there is the gift aspect. If you want to get with 3% down um, and you're able to find a gift, or maybe you've already saved up some money because you've had this goal to do this, then you can get in where you have even a lower interest rate. Um, you know, and let's talk a little bit about debt to income ratio, because some people get really confused about it. Some people don't realize because they think, well, I make this much money. But the problem is there's some of us who like to also spend that much money. So debt to income mm-hmm. ratio, what is that at? Lindsay, you want to touch on it? Sure. Well, for the program that we're talking about here, um, we're capped at 50 percent if you have a certain credit score. Um, otherwise, it's 45 if you have a little higher credit score. But what it takes into consideration is your total debt. So what this new 
housing payments going to be with the taxes and the insurance and the mortgage insurance. And then also any of your monthly um, minimum payments due. So it adds up all that, takes your gross monthly income and gives you what your debt ratio will be. And if you're above that 50% mark, then we have to kind of come up with a plan to get you underneath that so that you qualify for the mortgage. They, they actually give you pretty good, pretty good, you know, debt ratio. I mean, you know, Lisa, just if we're, if you're talking to somebody and they're paying taxes, you're going to lose at least in the state of Minnesota, you're going to lose 25% of that income minimum, right? So now you're, you take 100% and you're at 75, we'll let you go up to 50. Boy, we don't have a lot of margin. And one of the things, one of the reasons we like to meet with people when we can face to face and really make sure that we're going through the budget as we're going through the process too and saying, hey, just be aware. I mean, this is how much money we're taking. Here's your minimum payments. Making sure we make smart financial decisions um, to kind of help everybody. But uh, yeah, they let you, they give you a lot of rope. We just don't want to hang ourselves on our house payments. So. Yeah, and I can attest to Lindsay and Kelvin's um, creativity, their ability to tell, tell people exactly what they need, shouldn't do, should pay off. Um, I actually just closed on a loan with them. And so they are really great at really walking people through it um and telling us what we need to do and what we should do um just so that we can get things closed so um you know that's why we always say talk with the real estate agent talk with the lenders um because sometimes you're right there ready to go now sometimes you're one to three months away but with the programs that they have right now it really it really doesn't hurt to, to even if you don't think you're there um because i have so many clients who come and go oh if i would have known about these programs i could have bought a lot earlier so, yeah. so if you're even thinking about it, let's talk about it now and let's talk with Lindsay and Kelvin and see because it's the programs that they have um, and their ability to help you get to where you need to be. Maybe your credit score isn't where it needs to be. They can give you ways to get your credit score there. Maybe you have zero credit because you've been really responsible right. and have paid for everything with cash, yeah. which sounds like it's great, but talk a little bit about some of those challenges. Uh, the, the challenge, and we run into it quite a bit, Lisa, where people think they've, I mean, they've gone through some of the uh, national courses and, and there's some real good things in these national courses that say, cut up your credit cards and live on cash. As long as you want to live in a campground, because <laughs> if you're not going to live in a campground and you need to live in a home, you got to have credit. You got to show that you can manage credit, right? We're, the the uh, The absence of credit doesn't help you. It's the ability to manage credit that helps you win uh, on the credit game. So we want to make sure we have, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've said, get your Target card, get your Kohl's card, get a Visa card, right? And uh, just start to build that credit. We also have some local banks that if, if we're really credit challenged, we're going we're gonna to help them start to build credit where they kind of do this prepaid deal and we won't get into all that, but it's kind of a good way. We just got to start sometimes helping people build that credit because they've literally eliminated everything. They literally cut up every credit card and they haven't, their cash and they're proud of that until they meet with us and then they're sad. Yeah, so so don't get thrown off by hearing cash is not actually always the best way when it comes to you know coming to buy a house. So right. so but that's also why we're here to help you um, to get through that. And and it doesn't take a lot when you've done that, but it does take a little right. bit of planning, a little bit of time. Um, but that's what we're here for. Um, Lindsay, when you kind of, um, when you're talking with them and they're trying to get their pre-approval, what are some of the main items that they're going to need? Um, well, after we get the full application, the main things we need just to issue that pre-approval is the last two pay stubs, W-2s for the last two years, and, you know, their credit run, obviously. That typically can get us where we need for a pre-approval, but if they want to go in on an offer and say, yep, I have actually had an approval, you know, it's been underwritten, then I need like the bank statements and just proof of the assets that they're gonna come to closing with. But just to get started, the pay stubs and W-2s are great in the full application, obviously. How about the credit scores? Where are you guys at now? Cause we know that during, during COVID times, the credit score kind of became a sticky subject because things really changed. Where are you at now? Yeah, so when COVID first hit, it was it was interesting because all these lenders started moving that credit score minimum off. Mm -hmm. Now at Loan Depot, I mean, being you know we're closing thirty thousand loans a month, which is just ridiculously big number. I can't even get my head around it. We've lowered it all the way back down, so we're down to five eighty again on FHA. We're down to six twenty on conventional loans. So we're way we're kind of back to where we were 
Uh, but they did at the beginning of COVID, they moved everything up. Now we've relaxed. Most lenders and especially smaller lenders haven't, they just don't have that comfort level yet to have relaxed all of those rules. Um, now for the programs we're talking about, you need a little bit higher credit. You need like 650, 660 for some of that bond program um, because they had, a, you know, quite a, to be honest, they had a, some defaults with those lower credit scores. And, and so they raised the bar there. But when we go to this 3% down program or FHA, FHA, we're down to 580. On uh, conventional, we're at a 620 minimum score. And everything gets run through Freddie and Fannie. So we, we are looking for that approve eligible. And uh, Lindsay's one of the best. And then we have also a team behind us if we need it um, to just trying to work to get that approve eligible. So it might be a matter of reserves, paying something off. You know, we've done this a long time. So we know kind of what levers to pull, if that makes sense. So let's talk a little bit about when they pull the credit scores, because everybody now has access to their credit scores. And then all of a sudden they come to you and they're like, that's not what my credit score is, right? How many times do you hear that? Um, probably from me. Uh, <laughs> um, so how do you how do you figure out what their credit score is that you're going to use? So we, you know, obviously, so there's a, there's like two or three types. Well, there's three types of debt, right? There's the, or pulls on credit. There's a the consumer pull, which you're getting on your credit card statement. And that's the, the that's the most flattering credit score you're ever going to see, right? So you think I'm at a, I'm at a 780. I can't believe it. I'm so good, right? And then you go to get a car loan or an installment. You get a boat, toys. Chris goes and gets a new trailer for all of his tools. Whatever. Or a truck their truck, right? <laughs> and he's going to find out that that 780 is now about 760, right? So it's lower and like, what? well, why is that? Well, they measure, it's a different algorithm that they're measuring for installment debt. Then you go to mortgage and this is a 30 year commitment. We're lending you money for 30 years. So our rate, our credit score is always going to be the worst. So you go from a 780 and now we're at a 740, 750 and you're like, what's going on? I can't believe it. And the reality is that's still a good score, but we tend to have the work. We tend to have the lower scores just because of how they measure the time of credit uh, that we're extending, right? So we're extending you money for 30 years and typically a larger amount. So, um, so that's where we get stuck on credit. Sometimes it's really tough on some of those where it's like, we're right there. And then quite honestly, we're, we're going to help them bump over that 620 or the 640 or you know, we know where those pricing adjusters are so we can get a little bit better interest rate. We can, you know, we just play, yeah, we, we talk all the time about just pulling the different levels, levers, you know, say, let's pull this one, this one, let's get that score popped up. We can get an eighth lower rate here. And so we play the, we play the game, right? So. And that's why it's that's so why. important to talk with the lenders because, mm -hmm. um, because you might be reading it online, your score or one thing, but in reality, when it comes down to it's time to buy a house, it's yeah. going to be a whole different thing. So that's why we say get connected with a real estate agent, get connected with a lender so you know exactly where you're at. And um, they're going to help you either which way. If you need to get your credit score up a little bit, if we can figure out how to um, get you the lowest interest rate, figure out how to get you into a first time home buyer program, mm -hmm. because maybe you need this program, maybe you don't need this program, because what people don't realize, like he said, the one you pay it at the end. So it has to come off if you sell it. One of them, you do pay it um, you know, as you go. Do you have anything that's not payable right now? Or do you have any grants going on or anything? Um, there's a couple in, in specific, you know, Woodbury has one, Eden Prairie has one. There's a number of these localized programs. Quite honestly, the the uh, the box is pretty small, but they, they like to say they have it. So, you know, once we meet with somebody, know what they're, where they are, then we're going to, we'll, we'll look a little bit, but quite honestly, what we have is probably the, the best for the, the lion's share of people. So, and like we well, say, a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars. That's mm -hmm. less than what it's going to take to go rent a place. That's um, crazy, it's right? less than what you're probably going to pay to go live in somebody's basement. Um, mm -hmm. So, so it's really it's a good program. And the the fact that you can um, the income limits that that really surprised me what the income limits were. Mm -hmm. One question I'd have for you, Lisa, is what are you seeing in the market? Are there homes available for these first-time home buyers? Is inventory getting better? If we, if we get them ready, are you going to find them something to live in? So the biggest thing is, one, getting ready because there's not as many um, homes on the market because especially in December in Minnesota, where we always have a lower right. number of homes right now. Um, but what we are seeing is because people are moving up because of the interest rates, 
um, people are moving out of those first time home buyers to go into a little bit bigger. So they do open up, but you have to be ready because they sell very quickly. Um, and that's the key is if you're starting, if you're thinking about looking and you find a house that you really love and you haven't started the pre-approval process, it's going to be gone before you get pre-approved. Um, that's why we want to get you to calling, talking to Lindsay, getting it going right away, get pre-approved so that if something that you love and it happens all the time. And then I feel bad because people are like, oh, but the other one, but the other one, but they weren't pre-approved for the other one yet. Um, and it was gone because we're still seeing multiple offers, even in December on homes. Um, and so, but they're out there. So the, mm -hmm. the property that we found, the, the, the buyer that um, we just worked on that we were talking about, you know, it was, it was $150,000 townhome, a super cute private little yard across from a pond. It was so cute. So there are those special yeah. ones that you can still get in there for under that $300,000 price point. There's great ones above mm -hmm. 300, but you have to be working with an agent and you have to be working with a lender so mm -hmm. that you can get in there right away. I mean, it's, I can't explain how important it is um, because they are out there. They're mm -hmm. out there and they're out there. And if you have an agent fighting for you, it's going to, it's going to make a big difference. And to be honest, I actually, um, I'm willing to go knock on doors and I tell mm -hmm. people go knock on a door or, or don't, I will go knock on a door, go find a house in a location that you like. I can actually look up what that house sold for, how many years they've lived there. I can even get a score on it if they think they might be interested in selling and I'll mm -hmm. knock on a door. I, I have a, um, I now consider them friends where I knocked on them. They lived in Minneapolis. I knocked on their door at nine o'clock at night in Minneapolis. And Perfect. since then I've done four transactions with that same family um, oh, because wow. I had clients interested in that house. So I just went, Hey, are you interested in selling it? Fell in love with the, the people themselves. Um, and so, mm -hmm. so if you have an agent who will do things like that, it makes a big mm -hmm. difference too. Here's the other thing that I think that you're a big advantage is that you talk about some, but probably I talk about more is that just the handling advantage where Chris, your husband, who I love, is a phenomenal contractor. You can take a home and you can turn it into, you know, maybe there's some things wrong with it, or maybe and we, we're, this isn't our rehab, this isn't our rehab video. <laughs> we are going to do a rehab video too. <laughs> we're do a rehab video, but I'll tell you, we have one going right now and, and the work that they're doing on this property is fantastic. They did a property for me, um, Fan, unbelievable, unbelievable work, un, unbelievable work ethic um, of just their team. And they can go in. So if you find a home, you're like, ah, it's not everything. Don't, don't walk away necessarily. Let's continue the conversation. Let Lisa and let Chris get in there and their team. And it'll, it'll be, it'll turn that house into a home for sure. Yeah. Cause Calvin has programs for that too. And they are incredible. And we're going to actually do a separate video on that. But since we kind of brought it up and talked about it, if you are thinking about maybe going that route and we can find your house, that's a little bit lower that, that we know that it can, um, can be, um, you know, maybe it needs to add a bedroom or two bedrooms. And then we, mm -hmm. we can get kind of an appraisal on it and get you a loan for that too. It's, it's a great, great program because it helps you think outside of the box. Right. Because there's a lot of people who don't want to look at a house and go, Oh, it's not moving ready. Well, mm -hmm. we can help you get it moving ready. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of fun. It's actually a fun process. So there are yeah. so many good. options out there that don't think that just because the perfect one isn't on the market for you right now, that it's not your time to buy. I look at it this way. This is the time to buy because you have the perfect interest rates. Right. And that's the way I look at it right now. Yeah. If you have been thinking about it, these interest rates are crazy. It is the time to buy. It is. Good. Lindsay, you have anything else to add? I know we kind of went off. Kelvin made this big <laughs> old script that I said, I'm just going to go with the flow. Um, so do you have anything, Lindsay? Did we cover everything you kind of wanted to cover? Kelvin? I think so. Yeah. Yep. People okay. can just give us a call with any questions. And Lindsay, why don't you, will you give, put your phone number out there to call you, Kelvin, then you too? Sure. My cell phone is 763-443-1116. And I'm at 651-231-2500. And mine is 612-390-6520. You can hashtag Hanley Advantage. Find out a little bit more about um, myself. You'll see some information on Kelvin and the lenders. Um, you can creep on me on Facebook, on Instagram, all those places to see what we do, closings that we've had. And you can call any one of us and ask questions. That's what we're here for. We are very passionate about it. We love what we do. We love helping people get into their homes. Um, and um, you really want a strong, passionate team behind you. Yeah, for sure. Good. All right. Anything else? That's it. 
All right. Hope everybody has a good day. Thank you so much for doing this and, and having me put you on the spot. Then we're going to do another one. So great job. Right. Thank you.